Uncle Dan. Hi, do who? You know, because everything's terrible. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, but we found out uh, the other day that the re- part of the reason that the outgoing administration was not cooperating at all with the incoming administration, uh, especially about the vaccine situation, is because they had lied that there was more vaccine. Uh, right. There, there is no stockpile. That that was a lie. So that has me thinking. Well, I'm probably not going to get vaccinated, uh, you know, as a 52-year-old person in the peak health of my life. Um, I'm probably not going to get vaccinated until 2072 at this point. Right. So it's going to be a solid decade before. At least. So I'm looking for alternatives uh, for uh, for wellness and and health in this fraught time of inhalable death. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. And, And you should, too. Uncle Mark and Uncle Dan, do I have the pointless solution for you? Oh, <laughs> hooray! Yes. Uh, and, and I'm with you. Uh, you know, 20, 2021 has offered little of the promised reprieve that, that 2020 delivered in, you know, <laughs> <laughs> right. in spades. Right? Was, yeah, the panacea that was 2020 looks like it's not going to pan out for yeah. this year. So well, rather than stick my head in the sand, today I want to talk about something that is equal parts useless and stupid to distract from the end of everything outside. Uh, That as far as I can tell has not racked up a significant body count and at the end of the day is as harmless as it is ineffective. Today I want to talk about moxibustion. Mm. Gesundheit. Of course you know about this. Um, (coughs) Along with acupuncture, which Uncle Dan talked about way back in episode 18, moxibustion is one of the pillars of traditional Chinese medicine or TCM. In fact, both practices focus on what are called meridian points in the body where our life force or qi flows – in fact, both practices are often used in conjunction with each other. I believe it's pronounced chai. <laughs> and it's delicious. Yeah, doesn't the chai flow chi. through your, your limbic system? <laughs> sure. Why not? Yeah. I, I really enjoy a dirty chi. <laughs> <laughs> My chi is filthy. <laughs> I know it is. I'm gonna, I want to do what the Rolling Stones did and go to Sweden and get all my chi transfused. <laughs> so I can you kick don't know my habits. What that means. No, you don't know about that. That's how they. No. That was their thing to beat heroin. They would go they just go to blood transfusion. Yeah, they go get this massive all their blood transfused, and I guess that was the trick to get off heroin. So okay, I'm writing that down. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so Sounds traditional good. Chinese medicine believed, <clears throat> and to our great shame, being that it's the 21st century, still believes that disease and ailment stem from an imbalance of these energies in the body. And the manipulation of the meridians, whether through acupuncture or moxibustion, can realign our cheese and cure our sicknesses. <laughs> acupuncture. I and- like when you pluralize it because realigning cheese sounds really funny. <laughs> <laughs> if your cheddar is out of whack with your camembert, yeah, I mean, I imagine, like, obviously, <laughs> it, one hates to even think about it. Yes. Um, acupuncture and moxibustion are the big brothers of yet another meridian-centric TCM. Practice cupping, which oh, we yeah. have yet to talk about on this show. Yeah. Uh, uh. If you don't know what cupping is and how it's having a wholly undeserved resurgence right now, please don't go online and look at photos. This practice <laughs> involves using heated cups to suck the skin around the meridian points out. It's gross. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you remember when, uh, when, what's that big swimmer guy? Yeah, I was going to say Michael Phelps. He was super yeah, into it. And yeah, a bunch of athletes are into it right and now. And so they'd show up, you know, he's, he'd show up shirtless to swim in, in the Olympics and he'd have these massive <clears throat> purple circles on his body. Yeah. And because yeah. he was into it, you know, um, uh, everyone else got into it. Yeah. Um, he's an influencer. Is, yeah. He, he is. This is all, of course, nonsense. However, where acupuncture uses needles to penetrate the skin and apply pressure directly to the meridians, and cupping uses suction, moxibustion focuses on heat, using small amounts of an herb called mugwort, which is placed on meridians and lit on fire. Yeah. Anybody who ever spent- Yeah, as you do. Anybody who ever spent any time in a spa in New Mexico or browsed the Goop website for a few minutes has no doubt heard of mugwort. This is because mugwort or any of the flowering species of the genus Artemisia uh, has an outsized role in nearly every ancient medical or magical practice. <laughs> the plant itself seems fairly unremarkable to the untrained eye, not least because it resembles in form and scent its less popular and unfortunately named cousin ragweed, but its various mm. attributes have made it go on go, made it the go-to herb for all woo enthusiasts for thousands of years. Hmm. Vaguely bitter. It also, Harry Potter used it a lot. Of exactly. 
Uh, vaguely bitter in flavor, uh, it is known to repel insects, so it was widely used to cure meats and in food preparation in ancient times. Uh, it was even used in beer production before hops were discovered. Really? Other attrib- yeah. Other hmm. attributes ascribed to mugwort are boosting energy, promoting liver health, calming nerves, promoting regular menstrual cycles, digestive health, pain relief, and even curing epilepsy. This is all, of course, nonsense. Curing epilepsy. <laughs> curing right. epilepsy. Yeah. There is no science to back up any of these claims. In fact, the same mild toxins that help it repel, repel insects make it toxic to humans if consumed in large enough amounts. Its outsized role in all things woo and ancient may simply be attributed to the fact that like the pink bungadoo in Time Bandits, a 600-foot-tall, stinky, bright red indigenous, a tree indigenous to everywhere, mugwort simply stunk and is readily available. Like I mentioned before, much like its cousin ragweed, it's an invasive species, so it was literally within reach everywhere in Europe and Asia and eventually America after being unleashed by Jesuit missionaries in the 16th century. You're welcome. Some ancient practi- practitioners of moxibustion used cantharis, garlic, or semen sinapis, which is mustard seed. Mm. But today, mugwort reigns supreme. Whatever the reasons, modern moxibustion does not occur without mugwort. Therefore, you will find thousands of mugwort kits, extracts, teas, and of course, essential oils all over the internet. It, is, uh, it will surprise exactly no one that every part of the mugwort plant has found its way into essential oil pantheon. I'm sorry, Doug. I got, I've just got to correct your pronunciation there. Mm. Essential. Essential. It's essential oils. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So moxibustion gets its name from an ancient Japanese word for mugwort, mugosa. This was later changed over time to moxa and then combined with the Latin word for burning. Uh, so that's how you get moxibustion. Hmm. Yeah, okay. There are many different forms of pr- and practices of moxibustion, but there are three primary ones, direct scarring, direct non-scarring, and indirect. Direct scarring is just what it sounds like. Little piles of mugwort are lit on fire on the skin and allowed to burn down all the way to the skin where they cause blisters and scars. Great. Direct. No- That's the one for me. <laughs> direct. I don't need to hear any more. <laughs> sign me up. Direct non-scarring is what you see most often in health spas in the West, where a small pile of mugwort is kind of piled up in a cone on a meridian point of the body and then set on fire, but extinguished before it gets to the skin and causes any kind of damage. Indirect moxibustion is where a cigar-like stick of burning mugwort is held near the skin or a small amount of mugwort is stuck to the end of an acupuncture needle and set alight. <laughs> you should, yeah, if, hel- if there's anything we've learned from all the other woos, it's that you don't actually have to touch a person. Exactly. So, so they just, go they, for that. they're like smudging you. They just kind of wave it over your back. Yeah. So there's like the, the non-direct it, it either, uh, 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 they put a little clump of it on the top of a, of a acupuncture needle and stick it in you and then light it on fire. Or they literally hold like a burning cigar of it just close to your skin. So I like it. So moxibustion is mostly harmless. Unless you engage in the, the direct scarring method, then it leaves small burn marks on the skin. Yeah, I was going to say, you just said that you were scarring people. Yeah, it, and, and I'll just, the, the direct scarring method is not the popular one by any stretch. Um, and it's kind of... Why? Weird. <laughs> it's not really practiced. It's still practiced in the East, but very, very little in the West because people don't like cigarette burns. Um, instances of mild nausea and throat irritation have been reported, as one would expect from the inhalation of the smoke of several piles of smoldering ragweed mixed with the scent of burning hair. Uh, but like many forms of woo, it's not the direct harm that is troublesome, but the indirect harm of relying on useless rituals rather than science and medicine to treat real maladies. Yeah. Among the supposed benefits of moxibustion are uh, as a treatment for cancer, strokes, uh. Ulcerative colitis, constipation, hypertension, and even the repositioning of breech babies. Oh, no. Uh, this what? is all, of course, oh, no. nonsense. It, it, does it just make them sm- make it smell so bad that they turn over? Well, I, right, exactly. There are countless articles extolling Moxibustion's ability to turn a baby in the womb. How? How is, it, how is this done, I hear you asking? Well, first think it should really be done by a skilled, unlicensed practitioner. Right. Unfortunately, moxibustion licenses are hard to come by ever since the closing of Trump University. <laughs> if at roughly 34 weeks or eight and a half months, so you know, pretty late, if the baby is feet in the feet down position, then indirect moxibustion should be employed on the meridian point called bladder 67. 
And where is where is bladder sixty seven? The key to rotating a fully grown fetus in, fetus that, inside the uterus. That's what my jersey said in in, in on my middle school basketball team. Bladder, bladder sixty seven. I, I heard bladder sixty seven in concert one time. They were great. <laughs> You're going to be surprised to learn that the the Meridian Point Bladder 67 is on the outer part of your pinky toe. <laughs> oh my God! So Boo. You're, you're making this, it up. You're I'm making not it up. This, up. this uh, checking my notes, uh, does not work. In fact, if you are in danger of a breech birth and anybody in your circle recommends poking a needle into your pinky toe, wrapping it in a common weed and setting it on fire, expel that person from your birth plan. Now, yeah. Also, just give them just give them the most loving knockout punch you can. <laughs> yes, you don't you don't want to do any permanent damage. You just think like fifteen minutes of real REM sleep on your living room floor will probably really help them <laughs> realign their cheese. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, because if this show has taught us anything, there is not a terrible idea in history that cannot be made more terrible. <laughs> and so, traditional mugwort based moxibustion has given rise to all kinds of profit driven variations. Including magnetic moxibustion, microwave Ooh. moxibustion. Nope, I don't. I don't even know, want to know what that is. Sonic mo- moxibustion and laser moxibustion. Yes. <laughs> Product- pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Products purporting to provide one or more forms of this moxibustion are everywhere. Now, it has to be mentioned here that a couple studies have been done on the effects of infrared laser moxibustion on cancer-related fatigue. I'm going to walk you through this. Some cancer patients reported a very marginal improvement in their fatigue levels after go- undergoing treatment with low-level lasers aimed at certain meridian points on their bodies compared to those who received none. Now, like Wu practitioners everywhere, moxibustionists are willing to scale the mountain of science debunking their claim to hold aloft any meager morsel that supports it. But let's temper this just a bit. These studies are anything but conclusive – Basically like finding out that a basketball team using red balls scores slightly more per game than one using blue balls. Much more science needs to be done to get to the bottom of any of this. And let's not forget the subjects of these few studies were patients who had recovered from cancer, not by burning small amounts of junk plants on their torso, but through chemo and radiation therapies Mm. as far from TCM as one can get. You said the words cancer and moxibustion in the same sentence. I win! And uh, alleviating post-surgery fatigue is not even one of the myriad maladies that moxibustion even pretends to cure. (laughs) And lastly, that lasers are somewhat recent invention uh, and checks my notes, invented by science. Okay, hold on. How do you, how do you, how how do you get the ragweed into the laser? (laughs) (laughs) Like, I don't understand. Like, do you point the laser at the ragweed or is it a... Is is it a ragweed infused laser? I don't get it. It's is a, a tincture? ragweed infused laser. Can you tincture a laser? You can, <laughs> can you tincture a laser? Sounds you wave like a, the you you shoot the laser through the smoke of the ragweed. <laughs> Why not? But this you know this misappropriation of science has not stopped the paltros of the world from proclaiming that this proves not only the perfect validity of moxibustion, but acupuncture, crystals, magic beans, and why not vaginal steaming? Now. <sighs> There have been a few fatalities from moxibustion, but they are very few and far between and are primarily caused by the for- foregoing of actual medical treatment. Uh, but as far as woos go, this one is at least on the far side of the spectrum towards harmless. So there's not much to it. Just burning weeds on your body to smell. That wow. sounds great. That's moxibustion. You are a moxibuster. <laughs> Congratulations! Here's your certificate yeah. oh from my. Trump University. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, I, I mean that, but th- things like you know the breach baby shit, like that's crazy. Like it's dangerous, very super dangerous. Like well, the, also just stupid, just plums. Here's stupid. here's how it can fix a, a, a breach birth. If the if the person do how, what do you call a person who's operating the birth, whatever that is. Doctor. Puts, puts, doctor. Well, <laughs> not, not in this case, probably. But if they were to put a little of the ragweed in their glove and then turn the baby during birth uh, and pull it out, then that would probably be an effective exactly. way to moxibust that baby. Yeah. Every time this has been attempted, there it's followed quickly by a ride to the emergency room. <laughs> well, it's it's also one of those things where it's like, you know, you're 30 whatever weeks into, into the pregnancy, the baby hasn't turned. You pick a random part of that woman's body and do a random thing to it and do that for 50 women 
And maybe a baby will turn, and then you get to claim that it works. And yeah. then you have forty nine dead babies on your hands. Oh well, no, they'll they'll get them turned in the in the hospital. Or exactly. Whatever. Yeah. So well, there you go. That's uh, something I really am disappointed. I know about now. <laughs> We're moxibusted. All right, moving on. 